Boeing has sponsored Hollywood writers, screenwriters, you know, the, the ones who um, were supposed to, I forget what happened with their strike, but they were on strike and the left was very upset that they weren't getting their demands met. Um, some of them have been sent to uh, the NATO summit by Boeing and CSIS, the Center for Strategic International and International Studies, would say, uh, you know, military industrial complex funded think tank, mostly focused on Asia. Um, but it's, you know, part of this class of think tanks that, you know, are just funded by all the same sources. Um, and I'll just go ahead and play the video now. What should NATO's story be? Why are we going to need the alliance for another 75 years? To get these answers, CSIS took an unorthodox approach and asked our world's most influential storytellers, Hollywood screenwriters, what they think NATO's future story ought to be. It should not surprise us that the story is not known or has been forgotten by many. After all, for 75 years, the NATO Alliance has successfully defended the security and prosperity of North America and Europe. It has allowed memories of two terrible world wars to fade into the background. We may have forgotten the importance of NATO precisely because it has been so successful at keeping peace. We invited eight screenwriters to see for themselves what this alliance truly represents. We met with people from all around the alliance, senior U.S. government and NATO officials, local leaders, young activists, student filmmakers, and military service members. And we talked with folks who are on the front lines of defending democracy every day, including with wounded Ukrainian soldiers. You know, we always talk about the wars that happened, but I don't think we'll be talking about the wars that didn't happen. And I'm so grateful that NATO exists to keep those wars from happening. NATO is a bit like sunblock. You know, on the days that you remember to put it on, you don't have to think about it. It just protects you. And you can go out into the world and do everything that you want to do. You can swim, you can run, you can hang with friends, you can get a cup of coffee. The days you forget to put it on, the days you neglect your block, so you're going to get burned. Peace is a verb or has to be a verb, not a noun. It has to be actively protected and pursued. And that's going to take a lot of work on everybody's part. I did not know that every decision was made by consensus and that everyone had to agree and that no matter what size your country was um, or how much you were putting in, if you could do the, the 2% the GDP, that your voice was weighted and mattered equally. What impacted me was the connections made by different people from different worlds. Uh, people who for decades would have never talked to each other uh, wouldn't even have known about each other. And yet we all need each other to defend the values we all share. So this trip was a special experience because we started reintroducing ourselves to each other. NATO's story is a testament to the power of cooperation and collective action. As we reflect on the past 75 years of our alliance and look ahead to the future, we must be determined in telling its story to this generation. Seeing NATO through the screenwriter's eyes taught us that NATO's story is one of connection. It's a place where many of the world's democracies can come together to solve the world's hardest problems. We are not alone. Together we are powerful. And that is inspiring. So sinister. So sinister. Yeah. So there you have it. Uh, it was like Songlock. I know, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I just, and I, I wanted to point out in this because I noticed something, and I know that I'm 
that you're not supposed to notice things these days. Right. But I've reported on somebody who appeared on a slide in that before. This is a man named Vladislav Shatilo. So you have these screenwriters from The Revenant, from uh, The Diplomat, these kind of Netflix, you know, HBO style series that upper class white liberals like to watch. Um, but Vladislav Shatilo, this, uh, this gentleman in the middle here, this is from the video we just watched with the beret on, the green beret. Um, I recognized him because he is part of the team Ukraine for what's called the Warrior Games. And those of you who followed my reporting at the Gray Zone might remember that this was the team that included a guy by the name of Igor Halushka, who had a Sonenrad tattoo on his elbow and was awarded uh, a he – was, he was given an award by Jon Stewart at the mm. uh at the warrior games i think it was 2022 um so uh, it's it's a team that has multiple nazis on it and when i yes, say nazis well, i mean you know sewn in rad tattoos and uh had this event in disney world so here he is uh, uh vladislav shatilo and some other pictures of him here's here he is in an azov t-shirt and here he is giving a fascist salute, and that's Igor Halushka to his left with the Sonenrad tattoo. I think Vladislav might also have had a Sonenrad tattoo, but he got it covered up. Um, I can't confirm that, but it looks to me uh, on on his uh, leg that's still intact um, on the back of it. Uh, I've seen some videos, and it looks a lot like a, a Sonenrad was covered up. Um, so you have Hollywood writers sponsored by Boeing and the CSIS think tank meeting mm -hmm. with Jen Stoltenberg and Ukrainian fascists at the NATO summit. So yeah. there you have it. I mean, I think that it, 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 it's really interesting that this is being done. So NATO and go ahead. I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I just it just strikes me that, again, this is like a comms approach. Where it's like, okay, so like people aren't like really connecting with with NATO in a way that we want them to. And so the the answer is rather than do like something like positive and material, it's to get some script writers in to advise us on how to manipulate people <laughs> and, and, and get them thinking the right things. Um, I do notice on our uh, live chat that um, a, uh, a Conan the Librarian funny name said nato it's like ice cream it's so smooth <laughs> so smooth and creamy uh, i mean it's like it's like yeah that like that that, that, that they're, they're they've gotten some uh narrative weavers in to assist them with well how can we present ourselves publicly like i might add that they've already they, they so to give to give you and we've discussed this before but to give you an example in montenegro which is it used to be uh connected with serbia uh, for a very was for a very long time and has a very large Serbian population. Um, the NATO pumped like vast amounts of money into trying to uh, convince Montenegrins that they should want to join NATO because it's about safety and prosperity and blah blah blah. And it failed to move the needle at all. Like it was like in in the, during the 2020 election, um, there was something like 80 percent of the public opposed it. And then they, they were at this for years. It took a CIA and MI6 false flag coup uh, to uh, enroll the country forcibly and against the wishes of the, the, the overwhelming majority of the public. Um, so, uh, I mean, they have strong grounds for believing that this approach won't work. But I mean, hey, when you're all out of ideas and your your actions are, are bad PR, well, let's get some Hollywood script writers in. Now, I think that as far as I'm aware, this is like, the first, um, at, at least overt example of NATO collaborating with with scriptwriters, um, as we, you and I, well know, um, the CIA and Pentagon have, for literally decades, for as long as Hollywood has existed, um, or as long as those agencies have existed, been influencing the content of Hollywood films. 
Now, um, there is a, a, a journalist and researcher called Tom Secker, uh, who has done, uh, he runs a website called Spy Culture. Dot com uh, really w worth your time um, go there type in um, the, the your favorite directors or your favorite um, movies and have that ruined for you because you find out <laughs> that they are basically like products of the CIA and the Pentagon, and the CIA and the Pentagon. now um, if you could get the just as an example of the kind of the utility of this from the Empire's perspective if you could get the the, the PDF document up. Argos up yep yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Well, yeah. So basically, these are the declassified emails sent to and from the CIA by Ben Affleck um, when they were making um, Argo. Now, um, it, the it, Argo tells that this is a 2012 movie which tells the real life tale of the CIA rescuing six American diplomats who evaded capture during the storming of the U.S. Embassy in Tehran in 1979, uh, which is the the, um, uh, the, the 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 this was following the the revolution. Now, um, this is a story that the CIA had wanted someone to adapt for the for cinema for a very long time, um, and the CIA uh, has a section on its website which regularly suggests possible storylines for writers and directors and producers to pursue. And more often than not, this stuff gets made. Now, um, it's very, very, very clear from the from the email exchanges that like um, uh, the, the, the CIA and Ben Affleck have a very chummy and quite vomit-inducing relationship. So there's one email in which Ben Affleck says, um, uh, we would love to film a quick bit walking through the lobby, something in the parking lot and a wide shot of the building. We love the agency and this heroic action, and we really want the process to bring it to the big screen to be as real as possible. Now, I might add that like, Argo was widely criticized at the time uh, for its historical inaccuracies, and uh, also it like portrays Iranians, with the exception of a single character, as like rabid, aggressive, violent, and stupid. Um, it, it, I mean, yes, it did not go down well in like Iran in, in Iran at all. Um, I mean, it was, what was even more offensive, this is quite amazing, was that like in 2012, Argo was up against, was in the running for like most kind of Academy Awards and like industry um, gongs. And its primary rival for those awards was Zero Dark Thirty, which was also a CIA propaganda <laughs> um, um, uh, 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 blitzkrieg. And it, this dramatizes the CIA's kind of dec decade long manhunt for Osama bin Laden following 9 11. And it culminates with the, the Navy SEAL raid on his secret compound in Pakistan in May 2011, which we were told was filmed and then we're told wasn't filmed. And then um, all of the, the, Osama bin Laden's body was allegedly buried at sea. And then the, many of the, the Navy SEALs involved in the operation died in a helicopter crash. I'm sure that's not suspicious at all. But the point is, is that the Zero Dark Thirty was it, it kind of generated even more controversy than Argo because it falsely implies that their enhanced interrogation, the CIA's enhanced interrogation techniques, which is to say, like you know, brutal criminal torture of terror suspects, was fundamental to locating Osama bin Laden. Um, and like even the CIA's then uh, acting chief Michael Morell like expressed concern at the time about the fact that they were doing this. Um, the, the notorious war hawk, John McCain, um, a Ukrainian ultra, uh, was was so outraged that he wrote a letter to Sony um, condemning them for um, uh, legitimizing the CIA torture. Um, so, but it's like, yeah, the, 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 the CIA had such a incestuous relationship with the people who were making Dark Thirty, that they were effectively writing the script. They were taking things out that made them look bad. They were inserting things which made themselves look good. They were they were they were they were giving gifts to the filmmakers, and 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 the filmmakers were giving some CIA people gifts as well. Um, this prompted like an official inquiry because it was just like so brazen and awful uh, and corrupt. Uh, and and it's like you got to bear in mind that this is just like one movie. There are the overwhelming majority of films that get uh, the Hollywood movies that get released have some kind of CIA or Pentagon influence in them, and often they are. Uh, it will be small changes to scripts. Um, there is a Bond film called Goldeneye, where um, in the film a Canadian uh, 
uh, naval captain gets seduced by a Russian honey trap and then killed so they can steal his ID to in order to steal a helicopter. It's all very silly and Bond fast. In the original script, he's American. And so the CIA were like, we don't like this, so had that removed. And then in the script, there's like all of these clunky references to how he's Canadian. And then this kind of lingering close-up shot of his ID, which has an, a, a Canadian flag on it to like really drive the point <laughs> home. And this is all the CIA inserted. It's like, it's, it's, it's in many cases very petty, but it just does have this kind of insidious influence on, on, on per perceptions. And given the kind of uh, the, the cultural supremacy America has enjoyed for so long, of course, they would use this as a means of uh, propagandizing people. I mean, I'll, I'll, just from my own um, my own experiences, when the top when Top Gun to the sequel was released, um, I went to uh, a friend of mine. His son, uh, it was like his tenth birthday or something, and my friend invited me to just 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 hang out and chill um, because there were like adults there as well, and like. The, the the all of the kids there had just seen Top Gun 2 and like really all wanted to become pilots. Now, Top Gun 2 was written by the US Navy in order to encourage greater recruitment to the military. So, like, I mean, we see we see exactly um the kind of impact that this has that this has on people. And so I think the fact that NATO is getting into this now um quite worrying. I'm shocked that we haven't had a movie about the film about the war in Ukraine yet. Um, I'm going to, when it inevitably drops, I'm going to hate watch it and really enjoy that. I mean, maybe we do like a special episode yeah. on like you know, plucky Zelensky if he's not been killed um, <laughs> by that point. Um, David and yeah. Goliath. Yeah, and I, I mean, just in case we have any, you know, younger viewers in our, in our audience at the moment, um, the enhanced interrogation program, so-called enhanced interrogation, the torture program by the CIA Included tactics like uh, force feeding detainees hummus through their anus. Uh, yeah. it, it there was a whole torture playlist which they would they would play songs on repeat to torture people. Anything yeah, yeah. from very uh, loudly, very loudly, AC but... DC to the Barney theme song. Um, really, her, yeah, horrific, horrific methods. Um, which, well, which you is. know, yeah. as you pointed out, were whitewashed. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.